One, two, three, four, now she's ready. Now it's time. A Boston girl who knows who crime. She got cash, cat Welcome to Danny After Dark. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a notification for a new episode. Tonight, not only do I have a very special guest with me, B. Liz, but we are live from the Kitty Cat Cafe and Adoption Lounge in Peabody, Massachusetts. So we are super excited to be here. We will be doing a very different type of episode tonight. There will be no true crime. Are we sure? I mean, if there's a cat fight in the back, that's not on me. So, no. So we will be doing something outside of true crime. It will be a get to know us outside of true crime, more of our volunteering. Because, yes, I've mentioned before that I volunteer for my cat shelter. Liz was also a volunteer there. And she's the one that got me into this. So... This will be a very unique episode that will be near and dear to both of our hearts. And I think to you guys, too, because you guys are huge animal lovers. And I think that's why we all vibe with each other. So before we jump into things for tonight, how are you, Liz? I'm good. Uh, this is my first time visiting the cafe. So I am so excited. When I got here, I just like walked around making a video of all cats to show my husband and son because they've never been either. So this place is awesome. Well, I, I can't add. believe it's taken this long to get me here. No kidding. No kidding. No, I'm oh. bad. I was going to ask what your first impressions were, but you already answered that. Love it. So for anybody that is in Massachusetts or New England, definitely come by the Kitty Cat Cafe in Peabody. It is amazing. Amazing. We tried to angle ourselves so you guys could see the cats roaming around behind us during the live and see how it goes. But if all else fails, we got some treats. So... Y'all will see some cats, but yes. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know the Kitty Cat Cafe and Adoption Lounge, they are a, as I said, a cat cafe. Um, their motto is come spend time with our adoptable cats in a cozy, playful atmosphere. And that's exactly what this is. The cats here that they have right now available for adoption. Let me show you. I have the thing up ready to go. Sharing the screen is not one of my specialties. I'm not as good as Paul from the Paul cast, so it might take me a second, but, um, oh, dang it. All right. All right. Do I have it? Do I have it? There we go. So the cats that they have right now, there are 11 cats. Let me just pull up their names on my phone. There is Bailey, Remy, Moonbeam. Arlo, Lex, Felix, Casper, Binks, Scooby, Shaggy, and Boz. And they range from ages, let's see, 14 years old is the oldest, that's Banks. And the youngest looks to be one years old. So quite a range. And yeah, I'm going to leave this up for a quick second so you guys can kind of see, so that when you see them roaming in the back, you'll kind of have an idea of, who is who, but all of the cats here, again, are adoptable and they are absolutely sweet. They're amazing. Am I allowed to have more than six cats? Yes. My husband did the math, as you recall. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, all right, let me get that off screen. All right. There we go. Perfect. So as you guys are coming in the chat, uh, let's see. I'll just kind of briefly describe what a cat cafe is. And for those of you who might not know about it, there are cat cafes throughout the United States, but also mostly in other countries. Japan has a lot. Yeah. 
I've read that. I think it was, I, they probably had the biggest volume of the first cat cafes. Cause I know here um, in Massachusetts, at least, I think it was kind of slow to get going. I don't know where the first one in the States was. Good question. I know there's been a lot in California. Yeah. And then I believe it's Chicago. Okay. We have a cat that jumped on the table with us. So we'll see if my lighting gets knocked down, but all right, let's see. Hi. Hi. Ah! <laughs> what do you mean? As my notes go all over the place. Hi. So this might happen. This might happen. Oh my God. I love you. Oh my God. So sweet. All right. I'm all right. We're just, we're going to close it down. I'm just going to take this cat home. So yes, cat cafes are, I know there's some in California. Chicago has one. Oh, is it the cat arcade? That cat man does. I, I see him oh, at Cat at CatCon yeah, when I, I go to CatCon. Um, the great things with cat cafes are you can see and spend time with adoptable cats in a relaxed setting. So it's outside, right? It's outside of a shelter atmosphere. If you think about it with shelters, I mean, I volunteer at one, so shelters. Ah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you're not going to go on my keyboard. Computer. It wants the computer. <laughs> um, you know, you're seeing a cat or a kitten in a or even dogs too, if we're talking about dogs, in a very kind of stressful situation. There are other cats, you know, they're, they're in a cage. They don't get many hours out. However, this is just an open space where an adoptable cat can really thrive, especially if they don't do well in a cage. So you get to see them in a more, a, a different type of setting, almost one that you can more easily see being able to adopt to your own home. So that's the great thing with cat cafes and they work with local shelters. So they free up space, which is desperately needed. As we all know, God, nobody yes. has space. Everyone mm -hmm. has too many animals. Mm -hmm. so. And the cat cafe, um, they are, I don't know if the word is partnered, but um, they work with pals, animal lifesavers from out of Salem, which pals, Shout out to pals and also pause from Wakefield. So the great thing about this cat cafe is they take in some of the pals cats and then cats from pause. And that essentially gives us more cage space so that we're then able to take in more cats and adopt more. So it's this great kind of roundabout way just to, in the end, get more cats adopted. And if you think, oh, well, I'd love to adopt more, but I can't, or maybe I can't have a pet. I have a family member with allergies or, you know, you already have six cats and you really can't bring home another. Come to the cat cafe. You can hang out and you don't have to adopt. It is just awesome. 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 Um, they work with the community as well. So, you know, sc schools can, you know, book, uh, what am I trying to say here? Like book, especially during school vacation week. The kids just had school vacation week. Book a group yeah. a group trip yep. with your friends. Come. I know with my dance company. Shout out to On Stage Dance Company. <laughs> I did a social event where I was like, I'm going to pay and book for like two hours. Who wants to join? And I was like, and whoever Ven, Ven Mosby first will come. And we blocked it for two hours and we got to come hang out. It was like our dance company took over the cat cafe. And that was awesome. So great community things to do too. So and then we gave a shout out to pals but for those who don't know pals animal lifesavers one cannot say enough they're the ones that brought me all six of my babies they brought you they brought me my betsy who liz's cat just had a milestone birthday she did betsy turned 15 yesterday so against my better judgment we got her a little cat dress and we actually did get it on her because she's getting a little older. She's lost a little weight and she's definitely still feisty, but she's not as large and feisty. She's smaller <laughs> and feisty. So we got the dress on her. We gave her a little cake. We sang to her. She was horrified, but she loved her, uh, her cat food cake. Oh, so, so it was her quinceanera. Yes, it was her quinceanera. Yep. Oh my God. That's my girl. We adopted Betsy 14 years ago. We've had her for 14 years from pals. I know. Oh my God. She was just one. She was a baby girl. Yeah, my oldest just turned 11 and they were kittens that. when we I got can't them. I believe that. That seems like it was like yesterday. I know. I know you were there. I know. But we'll get into that. We'll <laughs> get into that. 
But yeah, so Pals Animal Lifesavers, I cannot say enough, um, is a nonprofit, no kill, all volunteer feline rescue group that is committed to promoting high standards of animal care and appropriate placement for locally rescued cats, as well as providing educational materials to potential adopters and the general public by participating in community events. So everything on that there. And I'm like, wait, I help with a little that. I help with a little that, but we'll get into that. But yes, pals brought me all six of my babies. So I will never not say enough great things about pals. Okay, what's yeah. with the hissing? See, I said there'd be a little crowd tonight. Oh, gosh. Oh. This is a catastrophe. Some cat on cat crime. I'm here all night, folks. Mm. <laughs> All right. So I did put the links in the description bar for the Cat Cafe as well as for Pals. So if anybody wants to check them out, especially if you're in the area, feel free to do so. But also if at the end of the live, because don't exit out. You want to see all the cats, especially if there's about to be a cat fight. But no, um, <laughs> if any of you feel so inclined to make a donation to continue the great work that the Cat Cafe or even Pals is doing as well, always feel free to do so. I know I have the ability here for people to make donations on YouTube. If anybody's so inclined and chooses to do that through my YouTube thing here while we're live, I will absolutely pass that on to the Cat Cafe. So just putting that out there. So, all right. But before we jump into our personal background with volunteering, let's just see who's here. There's a bunch of you guys already in the chat. Um, Nuffles, Heather, uh, James, <clears throat> let's see, James Watson, Mr. Beckham, Russell, uh, Mr. Jinx, uh, let's see, Chris James, Clifford Crawford, Fiddleford, uh, let's see, I'm just kind of quickly scrolling, scrolling, the better Paul is here, awesome, um, da, 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 da. oh, look at Paul! Oh, Pano is here. Wait, I didn't see. No yeah, kidding. right there. 16 cats. Uh, yeah, yep. Tony L. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Renee Michelle. Hello. Linda. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, I think I got everybody. I think I did. If I missed anybody, my apology. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise so bitch. yeah, I kind of have a brief eye on the chat, but you guys, by all means, feel free to just kind of engage as we're going on with the live. And then there'll be pauses I'll have. So like if anybody has any questions, then I can specifically jump to the chat. So if I miss y'all's comments, my apologies. We're a lot of running parts right here, a lot of moving parts. So, all right. So to get into a kind of get to know us more, my volunteering journey doesn't really start until you became involved because you brought me in here. So it starts with you. That's right. I don't even, how did it come up? I don't even remember how, cause I remember you not being a cat person cause you had dogs growing up mm -hmm. and I, I don't remember what happened. I, you came in and you guys met some cats and you thought, I think, cause you guys both worked right. You thought this might be a, a better pet for us to have cause you're out all day, you know, and cats obviously mm -hmm. can, the most part live with being at home all day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I grew up with, yeah. So I grew up with chihuahuas and I wasn't a fan of cats. Yeah. I, I was there. That. I was not a fan of cats and yeah, it's just, yeah. Dog, I mean, I still love dogs too, yeah. but you, you have to be, they can only be left alone so many hours and Doggy daycare is very expensive. Yeah, not quite as expensive as regular daycare, but it's still, you know pretty, what? <laughs> still pretty expensive. I don't know that I life. I couldn't pay for that. <laughs> I don't know that life. But yeah, and Liz was volunteering with pals and mentioned, you know, why have you thought of cats? I was like, oh, God, no, oh, I'm not into cats, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, we'll just come meet. And so it's just like, yeah, oh. 10 years and six cats later. I know. And it's just, I, my eyes fell on Cosmo. Cosmo is my black and white one. And I just was like, that's my cat. That's my cat. But, but you were already volunteering with pals. So let's talk about your, your, how yeah. that came about what, when you started, what you did. And, yeah. Yeah. So I grew up with cats. I've never had a dog in my life. I love dogs, but I love my friend's dogs. Um, we don't mm. have the time, the house space, et cetera, for a dog. So it's just mm. been cats. Um, my uh, now husband, boyfriend, obviously for a long time, uh, is allergic to cats and he, he always liked them, 
but he couldn't really be around them much longer. I don't know if you remember, he get like itchy, he get hives mm. and stuff, and he has asthma. So it really was like not great for him. Um, so I had a friend at work who had a similar husband. He was allergic, he had asthma. And there was, I don't remember what it's called. There's some um, allergy medication um, that she said, you got to get him Thank on this you. to try. Thank you. So um, what we ended up doing is we fostered a good friend of ours cat. Do you remember when we fostered Caitlin's cat? Yes. Yep. So we contacted the landlord and we said, look, we're considering this. Would you like allow us to foster a cat while we kind of test this out? Um, and she said, yes, luckily, like in our apartment, we had good, pretty good landlords. Um, so we started the medication and we took Pollock. I don't know if you remember Pollock. He was such a good yes. boy. So we took him for a month while they were buying their house and Pano did fine. He did fine. My husband did fine with the cat. The allergy medication worked. He wasn't itchy, et cetera, because you know, he liked cats, but I had gotten to the point where I'm like, I can't live my life, my entire life without cats. I would be crushed. I grew, I had cats growing up. I think when I was seven or eight, there was a period of like three months where we didn't have a cat when my mother's old cat died and we got my yeah. kittens. And then before we got Betsy, there was probably two years, you know, two to three years maybe that I moved out. So um, we Actually, you used to work at our old job with us. Let's not dox that company. We won't. No, we won't. So there's, there's a large nothing group, good to say. A large group of like local friends. We all grew up together. Um, my husband, my brother, all my close friends. We all worked at this company that was like big in the in the town that we grew up in. So there was a lovely woman who worked there. She was amazing, and she worked in the warehouse when my husband was still there. And she started to say, I work at a shelter. I volunteer at a shelter. I have the perfect cat for you guys because we knew we were probably going to just get one. It was just the two of us. You know, we didn't have to worry about like little kids running around or anything. So she said, you got to come meet this cat. So we were eventually, we actually uh, visited a, f um, a farm where there's a woman who bred uh, Norwegian forest cats mm. at first before we adopted Betsy because they're hypoallergenic. So mm. he'd be less allergic. We contaminated our study because I pet a barn cat before we got back in the car. So then he started itching. He's like, man, I guess I'm allergic to these cats too. Uh. <laughs> anyway, those were lovely cats. I guess people do have far less of a reaction to them. But anyway, Sally at, at our job, Sally. she I know I've lost touch with her. I hope she's good. She came by the shelter, I think, like within, sometime within the last two weeks. Are you serious? We, I was inside. I'm like, oh my God, there's Sally. <sighs> I thought she moved out of state. I'll have to ask her. I don't know. I don't she's, know. I love her. I love her. I got to tell her Betsy turned 15. So anyway, this coworker of mine and then my husband's, um, she said, you got to come in and meet this cat that I have. I think she'd be great for you guys. So we came in, we met her. She was a little, she'd been in the shelter. So she was one, she was one in a couple months. She, she wasn't a baby anymore. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't present amazing in the shelter, but her personality is not incredibly out there and friendly. You've, you've met Betsy, you know. Yeah. So she was adorable and she was sweet. And I'm like, she'd been at the shelter for like three months or something. She'd been there. She had a backstory. She actually got repoed by them. She got adopted as a kitten. And then somebody had to go take them back. First of all, because the people's check bounced. But second of all, because the couple that had adopted these two kittens was getting a divorce and the cats were just outside. Nobody could commit to bringing oh. them back to pals. So somebody who was in charge of the organization at that time went and got the cats. Oh, Jesus. So Betsy was one of the first repo kitties that pals ever oh, had. Jesus. So we took her home and um, with a little time and, you know, trying to be really careful with things and not push it. I mean, I don't know. She's just my girl. She's my girl. She's not a lap cat and that's fine. You know, some of them aren't lap cats. She does sleep on my head every night. The wife scratches on my neck pretty regularly because she curls up on my head and does the makes biscuits on me. Aww. So she'll sue me if she knows I put that out in public. Oh she, God. She, yeah, she, she has a very, her reputation. Yeah. She has a very interesting <laughs> front. So yeah. So that was in 2010 that we adopted Betsy. Oh my God. I started volunteering after that because they needed adoption counselors. So I did a couple of um, FCS shifts, which I think you'll probably get into mm -hmm. what that is. Um, I met a lot of the people that were involved and I started, I kind of like assisted an adoption counselor because I was all like, oh my gosh, I got to approve people to adopt a cat. How am I going to do this? You know, it's a lot about being a good judge of character, checking that references. I, there's a lot involved, yeah. but I feel like a lot of it kind of comes down to gut feeling. Um, and you need to balance that with these cats need homes and you're not always going to have a hundred percent perfect. I mean, I'm not a hundred percent perfect person. Um, 
anyway, so I started volunteering. And Thank I volunteered. you, Linda. Thank, Thank you, Renee. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. So, um, yeah, so I volunteered about five years till I started graduate school. I think then I kind of dropped out cause a lot of my weekend time was eaten up by that. Um, but by that point I gotten you into it because you guys had come in. I think I was literally there when you guys came in, mm -hmm. right. To meet the kittens. Yeah. So, well, 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 let's continue with yours first. So you, how long after when, when I adopted that you, because you stayed on for a while. But I, then, a couple of years because yeah. I started graduate school in 2015. Excuse me. So I think by that point, I was like, I'm going to have to figure out how many weekends are going to go. Mm. So so it wasn't, let's see. So it would have been 2013, right? Maybe or 12 that you adopted. Mm. 2013. Okay. 2013. Yeah. So another year or two, probably. We had some overlap, but there wasn't a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. I wasn't doing adoptions yep. at that time. Yep. So. And then I had my son. So, and then we moved also like half an hour away. So. Do you mean life happens? Life did happen, unfortunately. So uh, my son is actually almost old enough to maybe start like so volunteering somewhere with me, maybe coming in sometime. I, I think he would actually enjoy that. I think he would like it. So mm -hmm. um, he loves cats. He keeps a respectful distance from Betsy, although he's getting a little better at petting her because he's being able to tell her body language. Mm -hmm. um, and we do actually have another cat named Bootsy. So we did not name either of them, but we have Betsy and Bootsy, which is like perfect. Um, Bootsy, we actually adopted kind of on a whim from another shelter. Uh, oh. I know they're a good organization though. Merrimack River Feline they Rescue are, out are. of um, Newbury, Salisbury. Oh, I don't know. Salisbury. Salisbury or Amesbury, possibly Massachusetts. They're a great organization. Um, my husband had really wanted another cat and I kind of thought Betsy was going to just be her own girl for the rest of her life. Um, but we, for some reason, oh, I think they had some cats that had Star Trek names. And I was like, yeah. look at this, this is so funny. These cats, I'm like, look at this cat. I wonder if Betsy would get along. And my husband kind of got sad and begged. <laughs> and so we went to meet, we went to the shelter. We met some cats and um, we met poor Bootsy. He was sitting in a corner with diarrhea. He's a nice, nice boy. And um, he was nine. So he's actually only six months younger than Betsy. So they're basically the same age. So he will have his big 15th birthday in the fall. <sighs> yep. Um, they get along okay. He likes Betsy. Betsy um, is a bitch with an iron paw. <laughs> she actually bit him in the ass once, like a year and a half after we got I him. I remember that. And he literally, I, he got like an abscess, like on his butt. The poor thing. Like he had to have surgery, have a drain put in. He had a few stitches. Like it was this poor cat. But he's he's a cuddly guy. He just likes his food. He's got big, 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 creepy eyes. He's awesome. He's a tuxedo. Betsy's a um, tuxedo, but she has calico patches. She's got a little orange patch on her. Um, she came on well, the last live that I did. Yeah, she came on and stared at the computer for a minute. Yeah. Judging everyone. So yeah, my husband says it was months after we got him. Poor guy. So it might've been, we got him in a, we adopted Bootsy in a winter and it was definitely like May or June that that bite happened. So mm. It could have been, I thought it was like a year and a half. It could have just been like six months later. The poor guy. So, so we have our two babies, pals. I mean, they brought my Betsy to me. But you also, when you stepped back from adoptions, you did foster at one point too. That's right. I forgot about that. You fostered two cats. We fostered two cats. So um, somebody had reached out to pals because there was two cats. I don't remember if their owners passed away, but they were like left in an apartment. They were just in an apartment. They were two older ladies. They were adorable, nice, nice gray and white girls. They were like 10 or 11 or not, 9, 10, 11, somewhere mm. up there. Um, and we did foster them when my son was a baby for a little while because we had the extra room that was big and we could like shut them and leave them in there. Um, I think my husband wanted to keep them. They were adorable. They were so nice. But Betsy hissed and growled. And every time I, I think she would have just beat them up. So we kept them for um, several weeks. And then we were pretty sad when they came into the shelter, but they found a really, really nice adopter, like quickly too, I think mm -hmm. within a week or two. So they weren't there long. Yeah. But that was like an emergency situation because these poor cats were sitting and um, they were just sitting in an apartment. I think a neighbor was feeding them, but you can't leave these poor elderly cats. No, no. So, so that, yeah, I mean, you're, I'm glad you gave a background into not only your cats, but the ones that you fostered because you know, some of the stories that 
come along with the adoptions and, you know, for the adoptable cats that we do there, sometimes they are a bit on the heartbreaking side. And, you know, I think, you know, I always joke that like, oh, people suck. I'm more of an animals person, but yeah, I pretty much am. People do suck and I'm more of an animal person, but with, with rescue work, I do have to say, and I don't know if you feel different, let me know that you see the worst side sometimes of humanity, but you also see the best side of humanity yeah at the same time it's just yeah i i feel like there's a lot of times where you see where good choices were made in a hard situation um i know our bootsy that we got was nine and i didn't realize till we spoke probably the second visit when we did paperwork because we foster adopted him um he was adopted out of the shelter we got him from as a kitten they had his like shots update his shots and everything from when he was a baby so I know at PALS, we always tell people, if you can't care for your cat anymore, bring them back. Call us. You have no to move, questions asked. Like, if you know, someone, an owner passes away, yeah, yeah, anything. Anything. Bring them back and to us. And we will make sure they have a good home. It's better than leaving them outside. They cannot fend for themselves. They will be in danger putting them outside. They're animals. They're fine. No, no. not fine. So um, Bootsy got returned when he was nine, eight actually, eight or nine. Um, and I, I, the woman said there was a language barrier, so she couldn't really understand exactly, but, but there was a, they can't care for him. They can't take care of him anymore. So, you know, we were so sad for him. We're like, baby, you don't ever have to have another home again. Like, this is it. We've got you. And, you know, you don't know if those people, someone got divorced, somebody died, somebody was leaving the country. You die, you know, know. and Bootsy's a nice boy. (laughs) We have another friend. It's the same friend, actually. <laughs> so poor Bootsy got returned through no fault of his own. And he's, I, I think they must have treated him well because he was overweight. So he clearly ate well. <laughs> and he's nice. He's a nice boy. You know, he's uh, a little anxious and a little flighty and only has a couple of brain cells. But he is a nice boy. So he was not, you know, someone took good care of him. So as much as you see people doing things that you are like that's the wrong choice you definitely um see some correct choices for the cats yeah which is good so So. i'm going to take a few of these like (laughs) behind the scenes photos as things are happening and i'll post them on uh, my instagram because yeah it's like super funny but yeah so thank you for sharing your background with yeah volunteering i'm so glad we got you into it and you guys your your lives have been changed now for the better oh i'm still trying to i'm still trying to get her back there's some og volunteers that know and remember you i miss everyone and my um, time is getting easier now and i that might be something mm -hmm, potentially mm -hmm. yeah that i would like to do trying to get her back trying to get her back so as Liz, I'm like waiting for my lighting to be knocked down by this like incredibly handsome <laughs> tuxedo cat. Oh my god! Someone pooped back there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, I hope you guys get to, like I can't fully see the chat right now just as it's going, but I'm hoping you guys are loving this um, as much as we are. So yeah, my volunteering, as Liz mentioned, she brought. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh. Uh, here we go. You are gonna like shut off my computer. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. All righty. Are we back? We're Mm -hmm. here. We're here. Hi, lovey. Hi, baby. He just wants to stand on that keyboard. So, yeah, I started volunteering in um, February 2014. Oh, my lighting hurt me. I adopted in June of 2013. And after that, adopted two, Cosmo and Tuka. And I was just like, oh, my God. Here you go, baby. It was one of those things where the shelter just did such great work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have the best cats in the world. I know everybody thinks their pets are the best. No, no, no. I had the best. So, you know, as, oh, Sandy Perry. Hi, Sandy. Sandy. There's like a bunch of volunteers that I can see in the chat right now. And I'm like, absolutely loving that. And if you're watching and you're not in the chat, thank you for watching. I'm like, this is awesome. Someone's making a rocket. Someone's making a rocket. <laughs> no keyboard, my friend. No Let's keyboard. Begin. So yeah, in between um, adopting, I was just like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for what the shelter has done. And, you know, would make donations, you know, go on the website, you know, what do they need? What do shelters always need? 
cleaning supplies, mm -hmm. food, litter, things like that. And, you know, we'd see it when they were doing community events and I would, you know, would make a point to go and bring a donation and, you know, say hi and, you know, have photos of my cats and be like, oh my God, I adopted these two. Like, here's how they are now. And they're living the best life. And it's so funny because I was that person that was like, I hope I'm not bothering you showing you pictures. Like I'm and, and like, uh, it's and now like, being on the other please side. Please send as many pictures as you want. I know. Any and, time of day or night. Like we'll be at a community event. People are like, you might not remember me. I'm like, I remember your face. I don't remember your name, but I remember the cat's name that we've all, that we adopted to you. And they'll show us pictures of like, like, sorry if I'm bothering you with pictures. I'm like, no, we want to no, see this. We live for cat pictures. We live for cat pictures. <laughs> but yeah, I would do that. And then, you know, I was subscribed to the email and they sent an email that they were looking for volunteers. And I was like, I can do that. Like, that's the least I could do. I could absolutely volunteer. So I started doing, Liz had mentioned FCS. So that is the feed, clean, and socialize shift. And it is my favorite night of the week. I've been doing that since February 2014. So it's been just oh over God, 10, 10 years. years. You've had that same shift. 10 and years. Nice. I know. Where's where, amazing? Where, where's my medal? But um <laughs> Or, or discount on my seventh cat. But uh, yeah, 10 years I've been doing that. And it's one of those things where I, you know, I, when I'm there, I take pictures of the adoptable cats and kittens and I'll post them. And I just, just started doing it now on the Danny After Dark, like Instagram stories. Because I'm like, you know what? Let me share this with you a little bit outside of true crime. Just kind of, you know, share. And I absolutely love that shift. It's one of those, um, it's not glamorous by any means. It's one of those, I leave work. I am in like a baggy tee, sweatpants. My hair is just tossed up. And I mean, yeah, you're, you're cleaning. So a mm -hmm. lot of cleaning kittens are messy. Oh yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're feeding, changing water, but socializing, that's the best thing because some of the cats and kittens that we get, some of them need just a little bit more time or a little bit more socialization. And so mm -hmm to give that it's just, and then when you see the progression of how much better they do and then it's, it's like so hard to put into words, but I mean, there would be shifts where I would literally like some of the cats that we would have were just be so, so scared to come out of the cage. I know. And like, it's not uncommon for some of us volunteers to be like, all right, I'm just going to climb in the cage and sit and hang out. Yep. Yep. And I it's that just all the time. Yep. It's just, you, it is what it is. And to see the results of that hard work and it, you know, not just during my shift, but all of the volunteer shifts, it's everybody's part in this really does make a huge difference. It's just, that's what the, so the socialization part, as much as it's like, yeah, we have new kittens in and, you know, I get to get to play with it's the socialization is super important. And it's funny because each, I mean, you're, you're not, you, you didn't do the FCS shifts. You did the volunteering. No, I'd come so it's, occasionally, yeah, yeah, it's different. So it's funny because, you know, we'll get the email like, oh, you know, we have six new kittens in this week. And I see the email, I'm like, oh, my God. And then I leave after my shift. I'm like, I'm too old for this. <laughs> oh, my God. Kittens. Chasing after is They're not so much work. It yep. is. I'm exhausted. It's funny. Until you experience it, you don't realize. So my husband's never, he didn't have kittens. Like we had, we got kittens when I was eight, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And um, they're nuts. They're absolutely nuts. And uh, my husband's sister, my sister-in-law got kittens probably a year and a half ago now. They're, I remember that. They're almost two. Yeah. And um, they were both born in a barn. So they were barn kittens, but they were very little when they were like adopted. Basically, she took them and they are the nicest, most insane. She goes, they destroy my house. She's like, I can't. They're crazy. They jump all over everything. So, you know, we slash my husband has witnessed firsthand the pure chaos and destruction that kittens can cause, but he's obsessed with them. He's like, I don't care. He's allergic. So it's funny. I'm allergic to cats too. So if I spend too much time, like after tonight, I might be a little bit sneezy, especially, I don't know what it is. My sister-in-law's cats make me absolutely die. I need like Benadryl the whole time we're there. And um, my husband gets the same way and um, he doesn't care. He'll put the one cat on his shoulder and walk around. He'll sit on the couch, make them sit on him. Like we do not care. <laughs> They're awesome. They're awesome cats. But yeah, kittens are crazy. Kittens are a lot. And then it's little, like a little side tangent about kittens. They're nope. nuts. I mean, yeah. But it's like, you know, you're doing the socialization shift, you're feeding your, oh, it's like, all right, 
time to get back in the cage. You get one in, you get two oh in, you get three, you go to get that fourth one in. Yeah. Boom. Three it's of them run. It's yep. like, oh my God. Yeah. But it's like, but it's the, I mean, it's the best thing. Like there's a reason why I still do this shift and it's one, I'm, I'm just trying to do my part and give back to the community and to this awesome shelter and for the work that they do. But it's also, it's a little selfishly meat for me too. It's, 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 it's a, the best of both yep. worlds. So I started doing FCF shifts and then an email went out saying at the time they were looking for adoption counselor assistance. Mm. So I was just like, again, I'm thinking I, I can't do enough for the shelter is what, you know, in my mind. And I don't want to take on too much, but if it's like, Hey, we need help with this. Okay. I can do that. Or Hey, we need, I can do that. So I remember emailing the woman who was on the board at the time. And I was like, what does this entail? Cause I knew you did it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what's the difference between an assistant and adoption counselor? And it was a little bit different. It was like, you didn't have to quite do as much. It's a little less decision-making. Less decision-making. Which for me was good at that point. My, I think it's different now. Isn't it's it's different now. Different? It's yeah. different now. But I, my first day doing it, there's a picture of me. I'll have to find it on my Facebook. I bought a brand new, I'm sure you've seen the picture. It's like this cat, this backpack covered in cats. And I had a water bottle in it, my snacks, like a notebook and a pen. And it was one of those, like, you know, the kids first day of school. It's like the first day of school. Oh my God. That's what it was. I was so excited. I was so excited. Like, I'm doing adoptions today. Like I was so excited. Was I there? No, I was going to say, no, the picture exists. It's on yes. Facebook. I'll have yeah, to find we it. Gotta find that. But I was just so excited because I'm like, oh my God, this is another way I can contribute. Um, but essentially for people who do, you know, who do adoptions here with pals, it's like in COVID changed everything too. So we yeah. used to, you know, some of the time it was like processing applications on the fly. And, you know, we, one thing that I love about our shelter, and I'm not just saying this because like, I'm not paid to or anything like that, but no, um, we really try to match. Like we want the forever home. It's not just a, Oh, you're interested in this cat. Okay. Go ahead. Yay. Adoption. Like, no, no, we really want the best match for the person and for the cat too. So, you know, if we don't feel it's a good fit or, you know, it's, and I always say, you don't pick the cat, the cat picks you. I say that I just did an adoption ship this weekend. And I said that yeah, probably five times, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, processing, the, we do vet references, you know, landlord references, or if you, you know, everything to make sure we're adopting to, to, to the right person. And prior to COVID, that was like on the fly. Okay. Oh my gosh. One of the cats just got... jumped up. One of the black cats oh. and it's like on the shirts. <laughs> I'm like oh waiting for the God. shirts to like fall out. <laughs> That's an extra special shirt for someone to buy with authentic cat fur all over oh, there it. we go oh. um but now because yeah i mean covid changed how every shelter operates it just it yeah. really like oh my gosh um now a lot of that it's done before so all the pre-screening is done before everybody's pre-approved everybody they has in, they've already been approved if right? they come in for an appointment they've already been approved so it it's a yeah. lot less work yeah. for an adoption counselor so like anytime now that like if an email sent out it's like hey we're looking for more adoption counselors i'm thinking oh my god do it like it's way less than like what we had to it's go through yeah. i mean yep. yeah but it's still i mean it's still work right but it's it's a lot less intimidating and yeah it's really cool to be able to that moment and you've done it too that moment when there's that match it's amazing it's so nice oh my god yeah it's just oh it, it's just everything because it's all of the work that you know the people who you know, if, if, for example, it was a rescue situation, the work that they did, the work that the vets did to make sure they're up to date on everything, the work that the volunteers, you know, during the ships that I do, um, and the, all the other volunteers to make sure that they're socialized. And, and it's like, everybody played such a huge part to get to that moment. Yeah. It's just awesome. Absolutely awesome. And it's awesome too. When like some of the adopters, like keep in touch with us, we always say like, Oh, post on Facebook. We'd love to see. But when some of them, like I'll get like texts from like, like weeks later, like, Hey, I hope I'm not bothering you. You know, we adopted so like, I know where you are. And they, you know, would send photos. Oh yeah, my God. I love I love it. Love I'm like, you're best. not bothering me. Please <laughs> keep sending them. Like, yeah, it's just absolutely awesome. So yeah, being a part of that adoption process and seeing like 
watching them walk out mm -hmm. with the carrier with that cat and just yeah. how excited they are. It's just, oh, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's awesome. very special. It's very special. So some of the other tasks that that I've taken on, just again, it's one of those like if pals, if like if the shelter is just like, hey, you know, we need someone to help with this. I'm just like, I can do that. I can do that. So like the adoption folders. I help put those together. Right. I remember those. Yep. I yep. Do. So when people do an adoption uh, or, you know, adopt a cat, they get this folder with all this information and all that. And, and um, me, one of the other, Sandy, uh, will put them together. And anytime there's social events or fundraisers or community events, you know, typically it's like, hey, we need someone to, you know, man the table. And I'm, I'm, if it's something I can do, I'm like, tell me the event is in October. I'm going to put it on my calendar today. <laughs> I will be there. You know what I mean? It's just... Again, little things because a lot of times, I mean, you've done it too. People come up to the table and they're like, hey, you might not remember me, but I adopted I someone. I adopted a pal's cat. Yeah. yeah. I did that yep. after I first adopted. And yeah, they come and show us pictures and it, you know, and, or they'll come and make a donation or um, they're there with walking around with their friends and there's, oh, this is where I adopted my cat mm -hmm. and that type of thing, which is awesome. Um what are uh, one of my notes? What are some of the events and fundraisers? So yeah, we do um, sometimes like Pride every year. Mm -hmm. we have I got table. my pals Pride T-shirt on. Whoop right now. That's like my one of Rainbow my, Pals T-shirt. One of my favorite mm -hmm. fundraisers. Yeah. Um, sometimes like rest, we'll um, be able to work with restaurants where it's like you know if you're here from this night from this time to this time, you know ten or twenty percent of you know the food bill goes right. to the yep. shelter. So it's like things like that that are just awesome. Um, so yeah, anytime that, you know, the volunteers can help with that or anytime if, if I'm yep. able to be there, I Salem farmer's market. The farmer's market. The farmer's market. Yeah. Table. Yep. We'll get a table there a couple a of, of times exposure. a season. Oh my God. Yeah, Popular absolutely. Yeah. And people will, you know, come over and, and one of the great things about being, you know, a very local community based shelter is people, they know us. Yeah. So they, even if they haven't adopted themselves, they'll come by, say hi. And yeah, it's really, it's really cool. And, you know, make donations because yep. as a nonprofit shelters, you know, the, okay. The best thing about that I always love, and I can't speak enough about, about pals besides they brought me all six of my babies. <laughs> um, we're all volunteer run. Yep. Everybody that volunteers at the shelter is volunteer run. So you know, no one is making a penny. Yep. We all genuinely just love what we do. So when people come by, you know, at, you know, at, at the mark, farmer's market or mm -hmm. any community, they're like, hey, I love what you do. Thank you. Five bucks, 20 bucks. It's yeah. just like, I don't think people, it, it goes such a long way. And it's, yep. it's just awesome. It's awesome. I heard, I heard a growl. Just having some, uh, some noises. Some I zooms. heard a growl. Some zooms back there. <laughs> They're just enjoying their evening. Oh gosh, zooming. Um, oh, Steph says love the shirt. Yeah, it's great. It's a little big on me, but I love this shirt. Danny, the picture in the walls. Oh, screw you, James Watts. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay, so when I do that my, from your yeah, when I do <laughs> my lives from oh, my God. yeah, Leia, mm -hmm. Leia, who is yeah. not my cat. No, she's, no, yep. she, no. Um, she'll like she'll come in and she just. It's like, let me rain terror and bat at the photos on oh, my wall. That's so funny. It is what it is. Amazing. Um, that's typical girl cat behavior. Mm, yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, so some other, some wonderful other opportunities that we've been able to do through the shelter. And you did it with me. Remember when we did um, kitty cat first aid? I literally don't. I believe you. And I don't remember. <laughs> I'm trying to dial it up and I can't. We went to an email. Right, tell me, I was going to say. Okay. Me, it was in, it was in Salem. Yeah. And we got to learn how to do kitty cat first aid CPR. Dude, I literally don't remember this. That's so funny. That's so funny. I'm not surprised. Did you? <laughs> that's so funny. And it was one of the, which I've never had to do. Thank God. I've never had to do. I was going to say that's yeah. The vet that taught <laughs> the class though. Um, she was awesome. Like everybody had like all these questions about like, Oh, if my cat has this, what type of food should I do? So it was mm -hmm. like a lot of talk about that, but that's so funny. You don't yeah, remember don't that. There's so many things I don't remember. I completely believe you. All right. All Having right. Some fights. All right. We're going to have to toss some treats to break some of this up. 
But um, look at the heads all turn. I know the heads all. I see the heads turn. Let's see if you guys can see. It's like oh. the hordes. It's like the hordes are coming. Oh my god, that's funny. Somebody come up on me. Oh, sweetie. All right. Do you want to toss some? Come here. I was say, if you want to toss them like Hi, over there, so like they're in camera view too. Yeah, you don't here, have to get up necessarily, here, but oh man. So here, yeah, as I kind of mentioned, so I had my two. Nope, you're good. You're good. Um, and then along the way, my cats were the oldest two. I think they were five, and then I got we got the other two. And then four years later, the kittens. And you guys are more familiar with the kittens that you see them more when I do my lives. But, oh, my God. Yeah, you your spot's been taken over by this cat. Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, you guys can't see. But You'll this. Have to just come on my lap on the cat. Oh, so cute. Yeah. It, adopting in pairs. It's It was like two, two, and two. And it's just the way that works. And one of the great things about being able to do that is going through the introduction process of yeah and doing that in Paris was also a bit trickier but it's funny because when we do adoptions especially if I'm on the shift and someone else has a cat um oh baby oh, I was perfectly fine with doing the show with this cat the rest of the time I can go hang out with the cat sorry <laughs> um oh, it's funny because I was just saying so like I'll do like an adoption and someone else will have a cat and like oh how do I properly introduce and whoever I'm with is like Ask her. She has six mm. of them. And I'm like, let me tell you. Hello, um, look at Heather. Felix is the new co-host. He's so sweet. He's the best. <clears throat> he literally like wants to be here. Oh Hi. my gosh. So sweet. Yeah. So okay. that's how, in a brief nutshell, how I got my six mm -hmm. in that journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adopting in pairs. And the last two, the kittens. Yeah. That was supposed to be. Oh, that was a foster, correct? That was supposed to be a week. A week turned into two weeks, <laughs> and then two weeks turned into like, no, we're just going to do the paperwork. They're staying here. They're staying here. They're not leaving. And yeah. Let's see. Dead Wax says, oh, Dead Wax. Yeah, Dead Wax has. Deb, I've known Dead Wax for years on YouTube. He has oh, yeah. an orange cat and a gray cat that looks just like my uh, Selena. Oh, cute. Oh, I'm sorry to oh. hear Flynn is not doing well. Oh, baby. Oh, Dead Wax, I'm so sorry to hear that. Hmm. Foster fail. Yep. It's so funny because everybody was just like, yeah, those cats aren't leaving your house. Yeah. I'm like, we, yeah, we pretty much. Nope, we nope, knew. nope. They're, nope. This is just a foster. I promise. I pro yeah. Everybody knew. Yep. No, everyone knew. Everyone knew. So, all right. Few other points to touch on. So, one of the things that I really like in regards to, you know, posting on my social media or just that I volunteer is, you know, the other sides or other worlds of my life when they we they kind of combine into this. So, like for example, coworkers. They you know they all know I volunteer, and one of them. You know, typical cat someone will come in and say oh hey you know my cat really loved this food so i bought all these cases and now the cat won't eat it typical cat, typical cat. can your shelter use it um yep, yes absolutely so you know i'll be able to they get donations that mm -hmm. way bring them to the shelter which is awesome but my dance company too so shout out i'll say dance company so a lot of the girls there well i consider a decent amount have well, one, they love my photos, my little weekend photos, but they'll message me and like so several of them have said, you know, I'm looking to adopt. Obviously, I have to go to you first. And they've adopted through pals, which yeah. is awesome. So like the director of the dance company, girl, you know who you are. I'm not doxing, but girl, you know who you are. Yeah. the OK, so for the volunteers in here, do you guys remember Audrey? So Audrey, she was a black and white, like very her she was named after like audrey hepburn and she had that personality she was prim mm -hmm. she was prop she was the sweetest cat and like pe people would come and meet her and for whatever reason it wasn't a good fit and, and audrey was there for a while I'm like this yeah. is an amazing cat how is this how is this cat not adopted yeah director of my dance company comes meets her and it was that click it was that click and she's nice. just like i'm always and she, she'll always be like people didn't want her before I'm like, yeah no, no. 
and like she's living the best life now mm -hmm. and you know all the other dance members that i have like you know dance teammates that have adopted from pals too it's just been it's been so awesome because one i know that they are in amazing homes but also selfishly i get to still see them yeah i get to see them in yep, posts and like they'll send me pictures or video yeah. it's just it's just the best thing it's the best thing um and even during the pandemic one of a Again, I'm not docs and names, but girl, you know who you are. Um, she, one of my dance friends, she messaged me and has a few cats of her own and said, Hey, you know, do you guys need help? What can I do? I'm yeah. Like, we need fosters. She stepped right up and, nice. and fostered. That's it was amazing. just, and she fostered a few. She did foster fail the second one. <laughs> Besides the point. But it was just one of those. I loved how like that part of my life was then able to kind of mix in with yeah, pals and like great. adopt from us volunteer <clears throat> with us it's just it's just awesome so now I, every time there's a new season and there's new dance members i'm just like um if anybody's looking to adopt i'm can the give person your, can give your spiel. i'm Come the talk person to me. yeah so that's awesome but all right so um a big thing that I wanted us to talk about is, and if I, I know you have my notes here, so if there's anything that I'm missing, like by all means, I want to cover all the pieces. I can't push volunteering enough to like, everybody should do it. Everybody should do it. One, you're helping out your community, but two, like it's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Yes, there are some heartbreaking stories and it's, it's just part of the work. You see the worst of humanity, you see the best of humanity, but like, overall <laughs> it's just the best so i always say you know why do i volunteer why should you volunteer so part of why i do it is again i love working with a completely volunteer run shelter in for a while you did too i'm yeah. trying to get you back i'm trying to get you back but to be part of an organization where we all are there because we want to be no one is making any money we're there because we want to be we all share that similar thing and pet people are just we all get along pet people are good people yep it's true it's true um the networking the connections and the friends along the way to have like essentially if i have a question i could send an email to the volunteer and be like hey i'm and you're picking the brains out of people who are so incredibly knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Some people, some of the volunteers have been doing this for decades, Yep, like decades. They know their stuff. Or, you know, for example, we might have some people who specialize in, you know, TNR, which I'll get to what that is. You know, they have a different side of volunteering than what I, I don't know anything about that. So like I can pick somebody else's brain if I need to. And, it's just, I'm just so thankful for that. Like when my cat Cosmo had to go to the emergency vet a few weeks ago, um, right away, you know, she, Sandy, she's right there in the chat. You know, I instantly, you know, called her and was like, here's what I'm seeing. And it was just one of those, obviously, yes, bring the cat to the vet, but to call someone that I'm like, they have experience, a wealth of knowledge, you know, I, I mean, what am I seeing? And, you know, kind of confirming what, I thought so it's just to have that like at my fingertips it's just amazing um and with that being said you know working so closely with so many people here who volunteer you make good friends with them like genuine friendships along yep. the way which is i wouldn't have met a lot of these awesome people otherwise so yeah it's it's just you know it's in blah, blah, blah. i'm trying to say 20 things at once sorry it just it, opens your social circle too. Like I always say, I can't stand people and I swear by that and I stand by that. But volunteer people. Yeah. They're good people. Yep. I'll spend my time with you outside. Other than that, not really. <laughs> um, so another reason why I volunteer and why everybody should volunteer is do your part. Like I'm just doing my little part. Liz volunteering. She did her part. Like everybody just, it just needs to do their part. It's a community thing and if even if you're like oh you know i'm not i'm you know I, i'm not into cats but i'm in you know into dogs that's fine like shelters still oh, yeah. like one of the um 
authors that I recently interviewed, the Ted Bundy author Kevin Sullivan, you know, me and him when we were and him were messaging about, you know, setting up for the for the interview because it was pre-recorded and he mentioned a certain night. And I was like, oh, well, I, you know, I volunteer. Here's what I do. And he's like, oh my God, that's awesome. You know, and then he's involved in like he, um, and he mentioned it on camera. I made sure to ask him and his wife have beagles. They've always had beagles. And mm -hmm. there's a beagle rescue near them that okay. you know they donate to and you know all this stuff. And it was just like that's awesome. Yeah. Like that is amazing. That's again, somebody doing their part in their community to that. It means something to them. And yep. yeah, great. So I thought he was awesome before, but when he said that, I was like, Oh, all right. All right. Even better. Kevin Sullivan, check him out, get his books, go back to that interview, check it out. Um, when an adoption is done. Yes. So like I said earlier, when that adoption is done and those cats, you know, they're going to ideally, ideally for the, for the most part, they're forever home. So mm -hmm. every once in a while, something happens. And like Liz said, we'll tell people, you know, our pal's cat's always a pal's cat. You know, yep. something happens, you have to move. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, and someone passes away, the family can't take the cat or they yep. go into a nursing home. We will always take them back. Yep. And so there is those moments, but for the most part, they're going to their forever home. And like, again, watching them walk out that door with that, cat, it's just, oh my God. It's like that stupid, it's like stupid because it's an internet meme, but it's not stupid. It's like this cat to you is just one cat, but to the cat, you're like the entire world. Mm -hmm. You know that the sentiment stands, the sentiment of that is like a hundred percent on. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. One of the adoptions that um, I helped with, oh my God, maybe over a month ago at this point, I'll, I'll have to show you the pictures. These two cats, they came in looking for one. They left with two. Nice. Oh my God. It was like the perfect fit for this family. And we, do you remember a few weeks ago we had here in Massachusetts, a, or New England, it was a horrible windstorm. Mm -hmm. Like people lost yeah. power. It was oh, yeah. horrible. The, the woman sent me some pictures of the, of the cats and was just like the weather, you know, it might be horrible outside, but you know, look how cozy they are oh, here. I and I was that. like, oh my God, I absolutely love, I love that. that. Oh, it's it, people like this that make the internet tolerable, right? The internet's pretty much tolerable because of like cat pictures and animal pictures. Yeah. It's yep. just, oh my God, like getting that I never have enough. Like yep. it, I love that. I love that. When, yeah, when adopters keep in touch with us. Yep. And I love that. It's never like, too much. Never no, too many pictures. Sorry for bothering. I'm like, yeah, no. Never. Like you can text me every day. Yep. It's fine. But it's like those little moments where I'm just like, oh, the world, like, we as an organization helped in like now those cats will mm -hmm. want for nothing and yep. they're living like the best life they could. Yep. It's just, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. So I kind of looped that into when people adopt from us. So why volunteer? I love cats. I love animals. Yep. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, I got, I, when I have a ton of ton of tattoos, but like, I mean, I'm a cat lady. I, I have my cat tattoo. I have a cat tattoo here. I have paw prints on my back. Um, yeah, I just, I love cats. I yep. love cats. It's okay to volunteer for a selfish reason because you're still doing something good in the end for the animals and society mm -hmm. and you're enjoying a uh, company of cats while you're at it. Mm -hmm. I'll put a podcast. Oh my God. So funny. So, okay. <laughs> Shocker. I listen to true crime podcasts and really? I know, I know I might be able to recommend one or 20 of them, but sometimes like, I, and you know, you talk with the cats while you're there and I'll just throw a podcast on. And one of the older volunteers, you know, who you know, who I'm talking about, um, she came in once in the middle of while I was volunteering and I was just like, Oh, sorry. I'm just listening to John Wayne Gacy's uh, arrest interview. <laughs> on, like it, so the cats get, yeah, they get educated. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, but it's that. just one of those, like, the yeah. The cats get educated. The cats get educated. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Corrupting it's shelter cats with true crime since 2014. I love it. You know what? I I might be onto something here. I, I, I yeah. might be onto something. Um, the other reason, what is this? Come on, Danny, show us your tats. No, no. Oh, we're running. We got we're hissing. hissing. We got hissing. Um, I another big thing too is like I know when people say like, "Oh, I could never volunteer here. I'd want to take all of them home." And like, I get when people think that initially, but it's also like, 
no, you can do it. Take a step back. It's, yeah. You, I can't bring home every single one. You've I, tried, but you can't. <clears throat> you continue to try, but you can't. <clears throat> but Sorry. it's, it, there are just so many that I'm like, you know what? You, you, you put that to the side and you, especially when you do the adoption shift, you get to see that cat that like, that's been there for maybe a month mm -hmm. that you're you go in every week and you're so excited to see that cat. I mean, you don't want the cat there because you want them to adopt. It's hard. It. Yeah. You want to see it's them, a cat but you don't want to see them because you want them to go to homes. But to see yeah. them, those moments when they walk out that <clears throat> walk out that door <laughs> in a cave, in a carrier, it's just, it makes it all worth it. So when, yeah, when people say like, oh, I, I would love to, but I'm like, no, 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 there's no but. No but. Yeah. That feeling goes away. Pretty it, quickly, it goes away really fast. It really does. Um, but also I, and I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people, well, actually I'm guessing a lot of my like regular listeners will be like, Danny has love in her heart. What? <laughs> no, I have so like the big, big reason to why I volunteer. I have so much love to give to animals, not yeah. to people, <laughs> not, to, not people. to people. Don't to get animals. it twisted to animals. It just, that's what fills my heart. Genuinely, that's what makes me happy. So to be able to do that every every week or multiple times a week, depending on, you know, when I'm scheduled, it's just, it's the best thing. So, you know, yes, do I, you know, do some volunteers? I'll use me, for example, volunteer for more selfish reasons like mm -hmm. that. Sure, sure. But again, you're still putting in the work and you're still making a difference. And yeah. it's okay for you to want to do that because you also are getting something out of it. I think we're yeah. all there because we genuinely love the cats. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Few other notes here. So if people have questions in regards to, again, I can't recommend volunteering enough. And no, this is not a PSA, but it's just one of those like, it's the best thing. And I want others to experience that too. Like I really do. So there's so many aspects of what volunteering can be too. Like, you know, maybe you're doing like the feed clean play shifts mm -hmm. like I do, or maybe you're helping with adoptions. Um, maybe you're fostering. I mean, fostering can be a couple months. It can be a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. It's like, everybody can be like, you know what? I can carve out three weeks and help this one thing, this one situation. And then it could build, yep. but you know what I mean? Uh, TNR. And if people don't know what TNR is, it's uh, trap, neuter, return that I'm not, I went to some trainings on it. Like kitten lady did some oh, kitten lady, yeah. Hannah Shaw. I've gone to hers several times. Mm -hmm. I've never trapped a cat. I know. Well, actually there, hmm, there was one that was kind of a, kind of, kind of, yeah. but yeah, I'm not a T like TNR expert by any means, yeah. but that's so important too, in regards to community, community cats, um, fundraisers when people help with fundraisers, that's so important for the shelters too. donations. Oh, yeah, donations. That's, that's the easiest way. If you can't donate your time, right. Donate some supplies, some mm -hmm. litter, some food, some money, mm -hmm. some toys, anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, like I'll we'll be, use. yeah, I'll be there doing like an adoption shift with, you know, the other, you know, you know, adoption counselor and, you know, someone will knock on the door and be like, hey, donation. It's like a big bag of like litter or food. Yep. And it's like, oh my God. Yes. Thank you. It's like, all that is super helpful. So even, you know, you guys, and I mean, obviously again, I put the links for the cat cafe as well as pals. If you guys wanted to, if you loved what we're talking about and want to make a donation, but even in your own area, if there's a shelter near you, especially one that you've, you know, adopted from, or just one that maybe you haven't, but you're like, you know what? I, you know, 20 bucks, I, I can take 20 bucks and it goes such a long way. Shelters really need it. And it's just, th that's the awesome thing when yeah. like someone will be like, Hey, I was just in the area and you know, they yeah. have no tie to us, but they're still just making a donation. Yep. It's just, Oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I know you mentioned about your son um, possibly getting to the age of volunteering. Kids now. Oh, my gosh. When kids. Okay. Kids are the next generation. They really are. Mm -hmm. We have some kids that are, again, of age who volunteer with their parent. Yep. And it's just, it's the best thing. Yeah. These, because this is the future of rescue work. What and is, is there an age limit? 
I think we have a minimum age. We you do. Have to to go in with your family. We do. Right? I don't know that age offhand because yeah. I'm not the one that processes that. Yeah. End. But like we that. do, and it's just amazing. It's yeah. amazing because these kids are learning compassion. They're learning, you know, a work ethic at mm -hmm. the same time, and they're they're learning all of these skills that it's just it's the yeah. best thing. It's great. I feel like kids inherently want to help and mm -hmm. do things. Uh, my son has a. There's signs on the hallway in the classrooms in his school that say, you know, please donate to, it's like a local um, small rescue where he goes to school. And he's always like, can we do something? Can we bring something? And I'm like, we'll have to bring something straight to them sometime. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I know there's some places that will bring um, cats or dogs or you go to them with your child and sits and reads to the animals. Yes. Like that. There's, I know um, pals, obviously, I don't think we've done that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um the other day, the library where I am had some cats from where we adopted Bootsy from. Oh. It was like a come meet the cats and learn about volunteering and learn about rescue. Um, so that was fun. You know, that's a good exposure. So there's there's all sorts of ways. You know, you can't always bring cats anywhere that you're going to go. But they clearly had I wasn't able to go, but they went. The boys went. So, uh -huh. um, you know, if a cat's OK with that, you know, have an event. I remember pals had an event at the bookstore the one time. Yep. And that was great. We had kittens there, right? Yes. Yep. Because my son was a baby and he was just so I have staring. pictures of that. that? Yep. I know. That was so fun. Yep. Yeah. There's tons of ways to get kids involved. And again, I, I feel like kids want to, until they grow up in the world, kind of beats them down. You know, <laughs> they want to help people and they want to help animals and they want to do good things. And sometimes, you know, it's not feasible for a family to adopt a cat or five cats yeah, or you may so, not be so, allowed to have the money, have the time, have the room. There's like so many, but things. it's like here, like come, you know, volunteer or do this for the shelter. And you yep. get to spend time with all of these cats mm -hmm. or all of these dogs. Yep. And it's just, yep. And it's enriching your life and you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. We'll have so. two, like, and you see it now sometimes where kids will have birthday parties and instead of gifts, they'll say, right. you know, bring food and litter. Yeah. And then they donate all of the, you know, for a child, mm -hmm to be that selfless and say, I, I don't need gifts. I, you know, bring this and it's, that cat's going to come home in my bag. He's already trying to go in. I ain't mad at it. I ain't oh, mad at oh, it. Oh, at least he didn't get stuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, they'll bring, you know, their birthday presents that it I shouldn't even let my son know about that. Cause that's what he'd want to do for his birthday party next month. Do it. And if, I should. And if it's not donated to pals of the cat cafe, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh no, we are a pals family through and through. I'm so. just saying, if you don't see Liz For on my sure. channel oh, anymore, he's, he's there. He's in. The, he's in the bag. <gasps> Cat in the bag. All yeah. right. He's waiting. And also, oh. so, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Um, oh, oh, we got some stuff going on here. <laughs> Ooh. You know what's funny? I was told that by the volunteers before they left. You know, they'll probably be sleeping. You might not get much action. <laughs> no, we, they're having an early Zoomy time. My God, like. Betsy zooms between eleven and twelve at home. So maybe since there's people here still, they're a little bit. You know, oh, that's you funny. The <laughs> They're having early zoomy times. Um, this orange one's trouble. Oh, I love that orange one. I do too. He's trouble. He's the one causing oh. trouble. No, he's hey, misunderstood. Baby. Hey, baby. But kids now too. I say okay. I say kids. Kids. I'm talking. Days. Okay, I'm talking college, high school, college age now. Which mm, I mean, okay. which is not far from my age. <laughs> but um, yeah, they'll. The schools now will like partner with local shelters. So we have some of the schools now. I don't want, you know, I'm not going to dox any of the schools, but we'll, you know, it's part of getting credits or oh, part yeah, of, yeah, that's right. And they'll work with the shelter and do like, yeah, so many you tasks. Could do high school community service. You could have college student group. Yeah. Like whether that's it's helping with social media or they'll come and, you know, fully disinfect our shelter, which oh, is. Like a group of That's them will amazing. come and it's amazing. Yeah. I wish I like, I wish I had those types of opportunities, but the, the orange the one orange, is Boz. Our orange friend. Yeah. That's Boz. Boz. I love him. He's crazy. He was the As one. He should be. When I first came orange. in, I was like, oh, he was sleeping and yeah. like, I was just petting and he just was the most peaceful thing as they all are when they sleep. And then they, and get, then they open their eyes and it's yep. all, it's all different, <laughs> but yeah, so in a nutshell, I think that was all I had to, all we had to kind of, was there anything that do you think we missed? I don't know that off the top of my head, no. Mm. I don't think so. 
you know? So does anybody have, I, I'll have to watch this whole thing back and see like the, the comments. Cause I wasn't able to see mm -hmm. like any of them, but before we kind of leave for the night, does anybody have any questions for us? or any comments, anything like that. Again, I left the link for the Kitty Cat Cafe and Lounge in the description bar below as well as pals. And I, oh, James loves the white cat. Can I pick you up? Would you freak out? Yeah, let me put on, um, again, the picture share screen of the cats quickly so you guys can see. Did I have it up? All right, all right. Those are the cats. Casper, right? Oh, the all white one is Casper, five year old Casper. He's beautiful. He's awesome. I don't know if he would want to be picked up. So, Boz, that orange Let's one see. is two and a half. So, that makes oh, sense so he's why young he's, and he's orange. He's yeah. young and he's orange. Yeah, young and orange. Can I go pick up or are you not going to help me? We got treats. We got treats. All right, all right. Let's get this off. But yeah, does anybody have any questions for us? Uh, let's see. Yes, Heather, the white one is Casper. Thank you. Um, Steph says Moonbeam has the greatest markings, right? Oh, I am obsessed with tuxedos. Like, I mean, I love all cats, but like black and white tuxedos are just... They're my thing. They're my thing. Sandy says, great job, ladies. Thank Sandy. you. And I can't, I know I mentioned it earlier. Um, I cannot give enough thank yous and shout outs to One Pals Animal Lifesavers, but also the Kitty Cat Adoption Cafe and Lounge. So Cat Cafe, oh my gosh, what they created here is amazing amazing and thank you so much for allowing us to yeah use the space this is, oh is this amazing. a snack for me or no yes go ahead yeah help yourself Hi, for them to yeah open their doors to us for us to use this for tonight's show is amazing and again if you guys are in the area book an appointment check it out you i'm like i'm being cornered oh my god well they know we have the jar over i know here. they know we got the goods yeah we got the goods there you go baby this is amazing. There's, I, do you and remember? This was your first time here. Do you remember a number of years ago, there was a cat cafe that was supposed to open in Boston that did not. <sighs> the controversy, the controversy. That, of was, that. A, that was a big deal. That so big deal. we, I, in my line of work, I have encountered several people inquiring about opening cat cafes. And there's a lot of uh, regulatory issues with that. Not a lot, not things that you can't get around necessarily. Um, but I I did not think I would see the point in time where there's cat cafes around here. I thought I'll have to go check out the one and there's a adoption like cat cafe lounge in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Yeah. Which I'm like, I get to visit sometime because we're down there all the time. My husband's from New Jersey, so we're there all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know California, I feel like maybe Chicago, like North Carolina, South Carolina, somewhere maybe around there, but and I think a new one is opening in Boston, but I'm so happy that this kind of business is actually real now. Cause for so long, I was like, that might be a, a tough sell around here. So this is amazing. Yeah. The, the so cat cool. cafe here is doing so well. It's one of those, like you get the email, like, Hey, there's openings for the you know month of <clears throat> June. Boom. And then they're gone. And they're gone. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And the, you know, it's great for, again, people who are looking to adopt and they want to see a cat in a more, relaxed setting but also maybe you can't and you just want to come spend your time with some cat i mean yeah mm -hmm. that sounds great to me i've done i've come a few times yeah i brought my aunt yep that's right yeah you can shout out to play, auntie mimi you can sit and play a game relax read a book for a little while mm -hmm. hang out they do cats. game nights here um painting that's amazing i want to do paint night. we got to come to a lot of paint nights here uh, sometime if we can ever i'm not possibly artistic get i'll just just take my money and i'll sit and play with it the doesn't cats. matter you don't have to be <laughs> you don't have to be artistic but <laughs> yeah it's just yeah again big thank you to pals one for bringing me all six of my cats and yeah for the kitty and cat the adoption ones that you're gonna steal <sighs> come here come 
Hi. Hi. Ow. Is this, are you, is there Binks? Are you Binks? Yes. Binks. No oh, man, I love you. Hi. Oh. Hi, sweetheart. I know you guys all want to step on that. Yes, keyboard, huh? the cat cafe does have events as well. You paint the cats. You paint the James Watson <laughs> is nothing but trouble. Everybody <laughs> just ignore him. But okay, I want to make shell. Oh, okay. Apparently, I say in a nutshell a lot. Oh, I haven't noticed that. Now I'll notice it every time. So I say now it. it's one of those like yeah impromptu mm -hmm. drinking game. Every time I say nutshell. <laughs> Um, silver tabbies is my jam. Oh, I love silver mm. tabbies. Clifford says yellow cats the best. Mm -hmm. Um, Pretty Sandy's saying it's also great for the cats that need a more relaxed setting than a shelter environment. Oh yeah, Absolutely. the cages are so stressful for some of them that if they get along with other cats, this is so much of a better environment. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I mean, with like some of the things that I'll t like when I'm doing adoptions, I even said it this past weekend when I was doing it is. You know, you're seeing a cat in like the most stressful space. Right. You know, and some and of them are not that phased by it. Yeah. And some of them entirely are. Yeah. And it's you can't like, really judge well. Yeah. How their personality is gonna be, how they're gonna get along with you, how they're yeah. Yeah. So this is an amazing option. Uh Clifford, I've warrants in Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm we wondering we what we won't the... tell. No, he we don't have to. He already did. Look at that. Uh, uh, James is loving the cats. It's a slow night, James. You've <laughs> said nutshell twice tonight. I'm still so only twice. What has it been? An hour and fifteen minutes? <gasps> that's that's not that bad. What? That can't qualify as a running joke if you say it twice in an hour and fifteen minutes. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's Sandy it. confirmed that that was Binks that you were holding. Okay. So He's a sweet, sweet little guy. Aww. I love little kitties. Hey, mermaid, you're coming in at the very tail end, but good to see you. So I was, again, not able to watch the chat the whole time, but thank you to everybody who was watching tonight. And thank you to, there were several people that made donations. I love that. That's amazing. Yep. That will be passed on to the Kitty Cat Cafe. Yep. I, yeah. So I'm very, I'll be very excited to do that. Okay, James asks a great question. Yeah. Danny, do the cats stay there at the cafe? Yes, they do. They do. They free roam. They right? free roam. Even at night. I Even think at once night. They lock up, yep. they, this is their house. This basically. is yep. This is where they live until <clears throat> they're adopted. And it's great because they, you know, they don't have to go into like a cage at the end of the yeah, night. And this is this whole environment is set up for them to to live here until they're adopted and some of them you know obviously there's a few other volunteers i can i know are here in the chat that some of them maybe are here for only i mean there's been some where it's like they a few days a few mm -hmm. weeks some that are maybe here for several months right right but yeah they live here it's amazing everything is cat i mean i don't think they can see it but there's there's wall climbing like there's shelves on the walls for them to jump up on Yep. There's space for them to run. There's toys. There's comfy spots. There's everything. It's there's great. everything. Yep. It's yeah. Awesome. Like even at like at the windows, there's um, like uh, seats hanging so that they can like sit in the window and watch things. It's this is a cat's dream yep. until they get their forever home, which yeah. is the ideal. This is like this the is, next yeah. best thing. It's great. Yeah. And it, it helps us out. It helps, you know, and, you know, again, there's others throughout the country. It helps freeze up free up shelter space. So yep. you're giving that much more space to a shelter that can now, you know, take in those surrenders when people have that last yep. minute, like, you know, my loved one passed away. We can't keep this cat. Now we don't have to turn them away because now we have mm -hmm. all that extra space. Or that packed foster home can send a couple of cats in and take some other cat that's been left in an apartment or a stray that somebody's picking up or yeah, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, like that's exactly it. Yeah. Way better said. Way better said. I knew I brought you on here for for something other than your your wealth of knowledge to my, some of the my wit and wisdom. Wit and wisdom. <laughs> well, you clearly make good choices because you picked me as a friend. No, so no. So yes. Um, Moonbeam is the longest resident. Moonbeam is our cow kitty, right? Mm-hmm. Black and white. Um. Let's see. And thank you to Liz. So we didn't have to just listen to Danny all night. You know what? I do what I can. I do what I can with what little I'm given. 
that's a direct quote from my husband if he's still listening i hope he heard fiddle saying his next cat's gonna be a maine coon <gasps> i love maine coons they're the some of them the purebred maine coons are huge they're like enormous and they're huge God. and fluffy they're yeah maine coons so it can great. scare the neighbors i mean it probably would somebody would be like is that a wild cat is that a bobcat is that a lynx in my yard? What's going on? Um, mer mermaid. <laughs> They're huge. Look at he's still here. Mermaid saying that's great. I have three kitties and they are like our family. They are. That's awesome. As that, yeah. They should be, and they are. I'm proud of y'all for doing such great. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny because when when people like uh like will say, like, you know, on their way out, like, oh, thanks, thanks for what you're doing, or thank you for volunteering. I'm always just like, no, thank you. Like, yeah. thank you for choosing us to adopt with. Yeah. Like, I always like, which it's funny because like anybody who like watches my show regularly will be like, of course, I'm always like, oh, me, me. But no, <laughs> like outside of like YouTube where I'm cocky as hell. No, like when people do an adoption, they're like, thank you. I'm like, no, no thank you. Thank for, you. Yep. Like, thank you. Yep. Because I was you 10 years ago walking mm -hmm. out with my kittens and now like, yep. It's all full circle. Moonbeam, a great D and D move. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I I hate to say it. Um, I don't know. I think Betsy and Moonbeam would beat the shit out of each other. So. Oh God. Sorry. Uh, Clipper team, my buddy in Thailand says there are <clears throat> guest cats at some hotels. There, they roam around, and folks can have them in their rooms. I have I love a that. dance friend that just posted. That's so funny you say that, Clifford. On my Instagram, she, uh, sorry, on her Instagram, she went to Curacao. Yeah. And at the hotel, she posted in her stories. She's like, oh, yeah, there's a cat here that stays at the hotel. There are so many places and countries where there are just cats everywhere. Mm -hmm. And some places they're treated better than others. But, I mean, in Greece, we saw so many cats. Like, every cat I saw I was taking a picture of. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know? If I was looking to rent a hotel or an Airbnb or anything like that somewhere, if there were cats that roamed it, they would immediately have my money. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I like responded to her Instagram story and I was like, oh, I've been there. That's great. Hope you're having fun. Love the cat. Yeah, yep. <laughs> oh, God. So many cats. So many cats. Oh, yeah. They were all over in Greece. It was awesome. Mm. My husband's aunt and uncle had several, and they're all outdoor. They all roam outdoors there. They had this beautiful snowshoe and a couple of other cats. He was beautiful. I don't, I mean, their names were Greek and I probably don't, I don't remember, but they were, they would just lay around in the patio. She, the aunt would shoo them out of the house. Isn't Japan a, a like I think, another? Yeah. In Turkey. There's like an island in Japan, on Japan. I oh, yes. Thought. Yes. You're right. I don't remember the story of that but yeah right, there is but there are like are a big amount of community people that take care and they take care, they yes, take care, of, care of them of. yeah yeah and turkey i guess there's tons mm. of cats and the public basically like looks at them as something to be cared for you know people mm. like just look out for them yeah a lot of countries are like that it's great it's not like that here no no that's a shame no which is why we are trying to advertise do the work <laughs> yep. we're doing our part do the work. Donate time, money, um, even Japan. exposure, anything. Yes, yeah. Japan is the island. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> um, okay, fun fact. Fiddle <laughs> named Luke and Leia. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Fiddle, a.k.a. Clay, the Canadian heartthrob who I do some... Uh, <laughs> some case uh, collabs with. Oh. He's the one that named them. That's right. It's a perfect brother sister name. Oh my God. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. That was fiddle right there. Yep. Oh man. All right. Well, I think we're going to wind this one down. Thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, again, thank you to pals for all the great work that you do. And thank you to the kitty cat cafe and adoption. Um, Adoption Lounge. Again, if you're in the area, check it out. If you're not in the area, go on their website, check it out, make a donation. Eat five bucks. I mean, Starbucks drinks. <laughs> I've been there once or twice, so I know they're expensive. Maybe they know be my name when I walk in. Once but or twice. Once or twice. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's the price of a coffee. Make a, you know, make a donation. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I saw, yeah. I saw this live for Danny After Dark and great work. Yeah. Here's a donation. Yep. Or even don't even mention this. Just Make a donation, but mention us. Mention us. Yeah. yeah. So I hope everybody's inspired also to 
go to your local shelter, make a donation, help out anything. It's so much fun. So much fun. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Liz. Thank you for having me. Yep. I will definitely be back. This is my first time here and it is a not even close to my last. So, yep, this was amazing. Yeah. Thanks for letting me come on. Well, you kind of invited yourself, to be honest, but that's okay. I um, did. She but did. I only invited she myself did. to, like, help you set up and film and stuff. But this is different than what I thought we were going to do. So I did invite myself. It's true. Yeah, she did. <laughs> but you'll also be seeing her more on Danny After Dark episodes because there's some really big there Massachusetts is... true crime cases oh. that are going to trial. You're um, going to be seeing her. There is some whack stuff happening, and we will keep you guys up to date. Stay tuned for it's that. It's crazy. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. And remember, until next time, we don't live in darkness. Darkness lives in us. And visit the cat cafe. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.